For some of you who already know about the midterms, there are a lot of people who are uh, discussing and pushing, hyping about the red wave, but then you hear mainstream news saying that the red wave didn't really happen. Uh, because we have such trustworthy electronic systems nowadays, obviously the red wave didn't happen. So we can count on li these little digital robots to count your votes for you. And they're doing a very good job, right? <laughs> so we can, that's why there is no red wave on what's going on. If you can believe the condition of our world, yes, they did vote in Fetterman. As I've told you before, as I've told you before, whether it be elect electronics voted or the people who are dumb enough, I'd say both are dumb anyway. Uh, yeah. And no, I'm not calling uh, Fetterman dumb. You know who I'm calling dumb? Our stinking system. Yeah. Our stinking system is dumb. As I've told you before, even Cuomo was talking about, man, I don't know about the capability behind this uh, with Fetterman. I don't know if he'll be able to lead the country. And then all of a sudden, you got a whole bunch of people voting in Fetterman. Who would have thought? Even Oprah voted in Fetterman. Would you believe that? She... Her protege was Dr. Oz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then she didn't side with him, but went for Fetterman, who's a guy who's struggling with really bad health deficits. Yeah. You know what that's evidence? That's evidence how wicked and how dumb our world is if they want to stick to their own biased beliefs. See, it's not really equality. It's not a world full of reason. It's a world full of, I want to believe in what I want to believe in, and you got to follow my program. If you don't conform and follow with my program, then you're wrong. Yeah. So this is from NPR News, title of the article, Oprah rejects her protege, Dr. Oz, and backs Democrat John Fetterman in Pennsylvania Senate race. What about Arizona? Carrie Lake is a big name that's going around, and a lot of people are trying to push her as a hero. And Ron DeSantis, obviously, as you all know, got a big sliding victory. All eyes, are, uh, all eyes and attention are on these officials. The uh, title of the article from WFIN Local News Radio, Arizona County Delays Certification of Election Results in Political Statement. What happened was Carrie Lake lost, all right, because the electronics did the counting for you. And then Carrie Lake, she posted a video complaining that there were issues with the machines, actually. So then they're bringing up their complaint. She got her lawyers involved. And what's going on is Arizona County, what do they want to do? Delay the certification. Now, if you recall, the previous elections that we went through where people disputed the vote count. Do you recall that it just happened to be a holiday and they would postpone it? Yeah. And then after the holidays, they have their excuse all ready and prepped up. They must be enjoying their Thanksgiving holiday <laughs> or going through a lot of stress coming up with some kind of excuse. So it's not a surprise to me. It's not a surprise to me what they're doing. When I uh, study this more and more and more, I'm starting to understand more of how the enemy's tactics work. And when I study history, I really see that. As I've t told you quite often, when I combine current events with history, what men learn from history is that what? Men never learn from history, but you can see a pattern of how human nature acts and reacts. Especially when you read the Word of God, you'll see a cycle, a certain pattern. Which is why I informed the church all this stuff. If you do this, you're going to notice that. If you get involved in ministry work, which is why I urge people to get involved in a Bible-believing church and attend, but especially if you get involved in leading a ministry or helping out the pastor, taking care of people, you can see that. It's very, very helpful, very, very informative. So that's the reason why I always talk about this stuff, to inform you. That way you can learn. That way you can understand human nature. When you understand human nature more, you better know, you know better how to minister to the people. 
if that makes any sense. I don't know if that made any sense to you. So Trump is the big name that everyone wants to push as their last savior. So all Christians are gung-ho about that, right? Well, I would be careful if I were you, as I've warned you many times. The title of the article from The Guardian is, He Was Chosen, The Right-Wing Christian Roadshow Spreading the Gospel of Trump. I kid you not. So the article reads, how they introduced and how they paraded Trump is as follows. And this is a whole bunch of so-called Christians getting involved in this. There is a man by the name of Donald, the voice on the recording says. God said, you have been determined through your prayers to influence this nation. I will open that door that you prayed about. And when it comes time for the election, you will be elected. Dun, dun, dun. God is speaking. Oh. So can you imagine that? How many foolish Christians and churches are getting involved in this kind of stuff? But that's the rat race that you're seeing right now with the, from the midterms to the coming election at 2024. And you guessed it. Yes, Trump did announce it. He officially announced himself to run for 2024. Now, what would that put Ron DeSantis, right? Because a lot of people are looking up to him as this is the guy that can run for the Republican, uh, as the Republican pushing for the presidency. Well, Donald Trump, if you know his pattern and his history, <laughs> he always critiques those that he feels like he's up against or who's in competition with him. Why? Because he's a businessman, you have to understand. So he is not the type where you would think, oh, he understands personal empathy and he'll have an understanding with people. He'll side with this and that. You got to be careful of that kind of stuff. He's a businessman. From what I see with this previous pattern, he's always been like that. That's why he was successful before in his presidency. See, he, do he doesn't think about what people think. He's thinking about his own thing and what would be successful as a business, which is why the economy got better during his time, you have to realize. And the nation was doing even spiritual improvements. Anybody who's thinking like a business mentality, especially a guy like him where it ties to morals of the nation, they'd be fool enough to not see that there has to be something spiritual involved as well. Which is why if a guy's thinking about, uh, man, I'm going off on this, but I'm trying to make you all understand. If a guy's thinking about the success of a nation, if you get that kind of position, then you get into morals. And then what you're going to find out, if you're going to be thinking on the results of what is successful, Christian attitudes, Christian morals are the best way to go about, which is why Trump has always been in that route, you have to understand. But anyway, as a business mentality, he's shooting down everybody. And the title of the article from CNN Politics is, Donald Trump just sent Ron DeSantis a 2024 warning shot. <laughs> So what did he say about him? He even gave him a nickname. He called him uh, Ron DeSanctimonious. <laughs> so that's Trump, if you know, always had a habit of name calling his opponents. Ron DeSantis tried not to really get involved in that one. When people try to bring it up, he'll try to say that, you know, when you're trying to lead a country and you're being successful and numbers speak for you on how well I'm doing, Things like this usually happen. Criticisms will happen. So you have to learn to take it. So DeSantis is trying to do that for now. We don't know how long he's going to last, obviously. We'll see. But you notice how divided this is? It's getting even more divisive. You thought that the vote count was divisive enough? Look at the Republican race as well. Because there's another guy who might push for it. Pence. Mike Pence. And you know what he does? Like every Republican, they always have a spiritual Christian reason. That's why Donald Trump will use that. So Pence will do the same thing. You wouldn't believe the title of the article from Politico. Title of the article, Pence giving 2024 run prayerful consideration. Of course you would. Of course you would put prayer in it. Of course you would put something Christian in it. 
If you look at Mike Pence, it's disgusting. When he goes on CNN reviews, he'll, uh, CNN uh, interviews, he'll say, you know, it's an honor to be on CNN and stuff like that. Come on, dude. This is the same news media that criticized you heavily, that treated you like dirt, and then you're used to being kicked by them, and then now you're their friend. Oh, thank you for having me over. What a guy. And then if you listen to his interviews on CNN, it's so disgusting. He keeps talking about his book, his book, his book, his book. I'm glad you read my book. You know, he'll say stuff like that. It's, oh, it's unbelievable. This guy has literally become nothing, actually. So that's why you can see he's trying to get attention. So that's why he wants to be on CNN. That's why he wants to promote his book. What a guy, man. Speaking of book promotion, I have a book called oh. Amazing Dispensationalism <laughs> from Genesis to Revelation. It's going pretty good so far with the ratings. If any of you are interested, you can, <laughs> you can go to the YouTube description link, click on the Amazon description where it says you can buy a book here, all right? And I'm giving it prayerful consideration. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> anyway, I, th I thought we could use a little humor. If you don't buy my book, it's okay. You won't offend me. God's been good to me. I'm just, I just did that as a joke. But you notice how broken this system is. As I've, as I've kind of indicated in previous teachings, that's the devil's gold right here. Because this nation has become very powerful and strong. And if you've recalled our history... You can see the makings of how God's hand was behind it, making it a great nation. However, it's so broken apart. Once you get America so broken and that power divided, you can get better chances of a one world, <laughs> right? You know what I'm going to say? So a one world system. Notice this thing has been extremely pushed. It's so chaotic. It's so divisive in our world that you get even. This is so disgusting. This is from the Southern Poverty Law, uh, Law Center. If you recall this organization, they're the organization that always puts out hate groups, warns you about hate groups. Well, guess what? You know, they, what they did with this particular hate group is that they've removed it to a different location. Why? Because, remember, the enemies is white privilege. White privilege is the enemy. So think about some kind of hate group that might be black. Then what they want to do with that is it seems like it's supporting white privilege, so they want to remove that from their section. Would you believe it? The title of the article here from the Southern Poverty Law Center.org is Equity Through Accuracy Changes to Our Hate Map in Pursuit of a More Accurate and More Just Hate Map. The Intelligence Project has committed to collapsing the black separatist listing. So that's one name of a hate group, the black separatists. So they were committed to collapse that from the listing. But they assure you, we will still monitor these groups. But we'll be transferring them to hate ideologies, including anti-Semitism, that better describe the harm their rhetoric inflicts. You know what they've done? Because it's, the idea is, it seems to support white privilege when we put a black separatist listing over there. No, 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 what we're gonna move them is through a hate ideology category, like anti-Semitism or something like that. So then you can talk trash about whites, right then? Sure. Maybe we can keep doing that? Amen. How about that? And then this is from the Washington Examiner and people who don't trust that news source you, uh, you can just simply watch the video, actually, because they post the Boston University tweet, and this is so disgusting. The title of their article is, Watch Boston University Video Calls Property Racist Justifies George Floyd Riots. What, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is this stinking stupid 
idiotic prof uh, assistant professor, whatever, from Boston University. She's trying to tell people about when Biden or other government officials talk about, it's okay, yes, we understand your frustration, your anger, your protest, but don't damage property. You know what that professor said? Well, if that person knows how black people were treated like property. So because we were treated like property deep down inside our hearts, that's why we have to lash it out and, and what? Justifying destroying property? Is that what you're trying to say? Dimwits, man. Dimwits. Do you realize how wicked and idiotic how our world has become? You don't have to believe me. Just look up the source. Watch the video. That's all you have to do. And then you'll notice what she exactly says. It's so disgusting. It's so idiotic. I don't know what she's thinking. I could, uh, oh my goodness. She says right here, we often hear politicians, we hear civic leaders from inside black communities and from outside of them as well. We hear President Biden say, you know, I understand your frustrations, but don't destroy property, she said. Well, so she's still saying, well, when you say that to black people who historically have been property, one of our greatest weapons against injustice was the looting of ourselves as property from the system of slavery. And what we see in communities is they're reacting to the very racism of what we call property. Well, that's a fine scholastic terms and way to cloak your statement as basically as we need to lash it out against properties. That's what you're basically saying. I, I know that the scholastic educational gibberish, because I've been there. I've been to all these universities, these liberal universities in these Bay Area. I know what they, how they talk. It's disgusting. You just cloak it with terms like Calvinist scholars are doing and liberal scholars are doing, and you feel like your argument Wins. I win. Why? Because I use the most vocabulary words. Yay. And terms that people don't know. <laughs> now, this is actually pretty disgusting. Uh, the source is InfoWars, and the title of the article is Students Required to Complete Privilege Checklist in Mandatory First Year Course. And if you look, <laughs> I, if you look up their articles, if you look up that particular article, they give the links. If you don't believe the article source, that's fine. But look at their links. And their links are the original articles, and they do show, and they do show the mandatory course for freshmen at the University of Delaware. And they have to assess their levels of white privilege in a checklist. Can you, can you, do you see this? They're indoctrinating, yeah. they're force feeding this garbage down the students. But when you witness to them the gospel of Jesus Christ, they accuse you of proselytizing and force feeding them. Look who's talking. Look who's talking. Do you realize how blind our world is? You ever heard this uh, from your schools? From the people in this area? They don't tell you this stuff. That's the reason why I'm telling you this kind of stuff, because people don't study nowadays. They don't see it. They always go by what they're told. Oh, this is funny. From CBS Morning on Twitter. You know, remember where they told you about uh, the laptop where it went to, uh, that it was, it belonged to Hunter Biden and they caught some shady stuff on it? And remember what they all told you, including CBS, that this is all fake news, you know? And then the fact checker said, Fake, fake. Well, CBS Morning tweeted that CBS News has obtained data from a laptop purpo purported to have belonged to Hunter Biden. The data came directly from the source who said they provided it to the FBI under subpoena. CBS Heritage shares what was found during an independent forensic review. Hey, that's old news. But they did this before elections. You know, uh, they, they hid this before elections, excuse me. Then they tell you what? Long after, not even long after election, but long after even midterms. 
You notice that? You notice that? You don't see an agenda? Or are you so blind? Come on, man. This is old news. But now CBS Morning admits it. Now that the Democrats have got their seats in the midterms. Now let's let it out. <laughs> you really don't see bias behind everything? You're blind. Now this is the article from Fox News. What is the alleged connection between Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX, Democrats, and Ukraine? Now, for some of you who don't know, what I'll say about this article is, I'm not sure yet, but I believe you should be informed of what's going on, and you make the conclusion yourself, or just keep an eye out. For some of you who don't know, George Soros has been the biggest funder for the Democratic Party. That's not even a secret. You can look up the biggest donors uh, website and they'll show it. If he's not the biggest donor, he's at least one of the biggest donors. But the guy they said is second is Sam Bankman Freed. Now, why is he important? Because this guy, he donated nearly 38 million for the midterm cycle. He does, uh, he gets involved with the, I think what they call digital transformation of money, where it has something to do with cryptocurrency. But anyways, his company, FTX, has now, is now under investigation because there's a lot of money that's suddenly missing. And they're wondering if he has some corruption behind it. But looky, looky, when he's been supporting the Democratic Party, think about it, the Democratic Party had been supporting the Ukraine. And believe it or not, if you look up Ukraine and then their programs, they were supporting, guess what? Uh, Sam Bankman Freed. So then, what they're suggesting here is, do you think there is an alleged connection between these guys then? So that they can retain their power. But anyways, uh, let's just suppose that I'm completely off bonkers and I'm wrong, but at least you now know. So then, later on, if you see some red flags and you do your own independent study, you might probably go, ooh, there might be something going on here. Oh, and if this is not a coincidence, from Breitbart News, New York uh, NYT host event featuring disgraced former FTX CEO, that's Sam Bankman-Fried, with guess who? Ukraine president. And also, what's strange here, they also mention other people participating. S some lawmakers who appear to be in attendance as speakers are President Joe Biden's U.S. Sec Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, former Vice President Mike Pence, Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as Sho Chu, the CEO of the Chinese app TikTok, Reed Hastings, the founder and co-CEO of Netflix, uh, Andy Jassy, the president and CEO of Amazon, Van Jones, CNN host. Let's see right here. There's a lot of big names here. Priscilla Sims Brown, the president and CEO of Amalgamated Bank. Mark Zuckerberg, the chairman and CEO of Meta. Larry Fink, CEO of, guess what? BlackRock, which some people suppose that's the richest globalist or banker. No, it's kind of kind of weird. Birds of a feather flock together. Just keep your eyes peeled, okay? If you don't trust those two sources I mentioned, just... Uh, search it out yourself and just keep your eyes peeled. That's it. Amen. The chaos continues where, believe it or not, this is on Click on Detroit for Local News. Title of their video is Dr. A. Oveta Fuller of University of Michigan Medicine Passes Away at 67. And you might say, Why, what's so important about that? You know who she was? She was the one instrumental in the emergency authorization of the co, of the, <laughs> yeah, of the, of this, and then she suddenly passed away. 
at age 67. Strange, strange. Here's another one. This is from ABC 15 News. Title of the article, Leaked Docs Show Facebook Made Portal for Feds to Report Misinfo, Report Says. Yeah, they're all in on it. See, there's corruption rising. They're all in on it together. Here's another one from uh, Deadline News. With their corruption, what happens to media coverage? Oh, they eat their own medicine. By their fruit, see, shall know them, right? You reap what you sow. So Don Lemon, the, the one who's holding CNN together because everyone's just going away, right? Brian Stelter's gone, you know. The, the guy who's in charge is gone, you know. And then, oh, what happened to Cuomo? Now he's a loser with just very few views nowadays. What's going on? Don Lemon, save our lives. Title of the article from Deadline. Don Lemon says goodbye to CNN primetime show. With emotional farewell ahead of morning show debut. <laughs> no surprise. Why? Because people can smell CNN, all right? They know that they're all just full of bogus bias. So because of that criticism, you know what Don Lemon's arguing? The title of the article from The Hill is CNN's Don Lemon on New Morning Show Gig. I was not demoted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and MSNBC, do you know Tiffany Cross? She's probably worse than jo uh, Joy or Joyce Reed. For some of you who don't know, they are the most hateful news reporter you would ever meet. You would, uh, you would hate yourself for being white, basically, when you hear them talk. But guess what happened to her? Title of the article from the Black Wall Street Times, their whole news source. They're the, they're the ones who even said this. MSNBC unexpectedly fires popular black host Tiffany Cross. <laughs> Losers, right? Losers. They're reaping what they've sown, eating their own medicine. Why? Because people can read and they can smell their fungus, their hypocrisy, their lies. Steve Crowder, for some of you who don't know, he actually, either he got suspended or banned from YouTube, so he couldn't really uh, sh uh, play his videos. But what happened was, the title of their video is Ban Lifted. Monday we fight like, well, I'm not going to say the word, but H-E double L. <laughs> Louder with Crowder. So in that video, uh, he points out, and you're going to see Candace Owens and other people pointing out that in spite of YouTube, where they were putting the ban, if it was Don Lemon, Tiffany Cross, and those other CNN reporters and all those other people, they wouldn't have gotten a lot of hits and views. Look at Cuomo. He doesn't get a lot of views. But Steve Crowder, he hit the largest live stream ever, 3 million wow. live stream. And I think it was on Rumble. That was unheard of. Why? Because people can smell the hypocrisy and lies. That's the media coverage. That's what they're trying to control. Notice they're trying to control media with the feds getting involved, the liberal news report trying to get promoted, but people can already smell the stink and realize what's wrong with them. Now look at Daniel chapter 9, verse 5. What is my point in all this? My point is, notice this is all division, confusion, right? Covering the, the elections with the Republicans even becoming more divisive amongst them. Corruption spreading, this critical race theory that's confusing people and making it so confounded that even the Southern Poverty Law Center does the unthinkable of like practically removing a hate group from a hate group category by name. And then they control the media coverage. What is all this confusion? Why is this confusion happening? Because of sin. When there is sin, people who want to keep sinning, you'll notice that what happens is that God will confound it. Now, here's the thing. Why, is, uh, why are we going what we're going through with all this confusion with people's sin? It is true that because of people's sin, there is confusion that results. But this is what I think. I think that this uh, division is going to get far worse. And I've indicated that in previous videos. You might say, why does it have to happen? When people don't repent of their sin, God, I said God, 
God himself is the one that will make sure to send the confusion and make sure that confusion results from their sin. Look, when you have sin, you can't escape confusion. No matter who, which party you push, Democrat, Republican, or if you're more conservative, liberal, or yay for Steve Crowder, Donald Trump is our savior or whatever, it doesn't matter. When sin is involved, God will say, no, it does, I don't care. I don't care if you get three million live stream and you hit the record with Steve Crowder. I'm going to make sure that confusion will still occur. God will send it. God will make it happen. If you don't believe me, look at Daniel chapter 9 and then we'll read verses 5 through 8. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets. See, because the people sinned, they're not listening to the preachers. Which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Isn't that true? The government officials, the people of the land, they don't listen to the preachers nowadays, right? So what did the Bible say? Look at this. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us, what? Confusion of faces, as that is this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off, through all the countries, whither who? Thou, God, God is the one has driven them because of why? Their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. To our what? Kings. To our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. That's a great verse to preach to this nation nowadays. I don't care, Republican, right wing, left wing, Democrat, whatnot. It doesn't matter. You will, God will still send you confusion if you don't repent of your sin. So then, what's the solution? Freedom, obviously. If we have more of an individualistic freedom mindset, we can break from this confusion, right? No, notice right here, God still confounds. Amen. Even if you have the individualism and freedom. Now, is it true that America was born in such a concept? Of course, and it helped us make a great nation. But think about this. If there was no Bible... If there was no spiritual principle, just individualistic freedom, you know what you get? You still get a blank mess. What made the country great was not because of individualism and freedom. Those concepts were born because first was spiritual principles. Amen. Now, if you don't believe me, a great evidence is Elon Musk. You know, he's sick of these left-wing agenda. So what did he want to do? I want to bring freedom on Twitter. So some of them, you're going to laugh. Title of the article from CNBC, Elon Musk now in charge of Twitter. CEO and CFO have left, sources say. Good riddance, man. Good riddance. Cleaning house, man. These <laughs> dumb liberals. So one of the uh, journalists, all right, Taylor Lorenz, for some of you who know about that liberal uh, journalist, you know what she tweeted in Twitter? It's like the gates of hell opened on this site tonight. Because she is freaking out because of so many people leaving Twitter and Elon Musk taking more of charge. As a matter of fact, title of the article, and this is from Vanessa Serna, who, who writes for the Associated Press. Title of the article is Elon Musk fires thousands of Twitter contractors responsible for battling misinformation on the site. A week after sacking half of its permanent staff, contractors suddenly locked out of work systems turned to Twitter for confirmation. <laughs> Good riddance, man. Cleaning house. So everybody is running for the hills. Everyone's scared. In fact, this is an article from the New York Post. Title of the article, Twitter manager vomited after Elon Musk ordered him to fire employees, <laughs> report. <laughs> From Business Insider, they're so riled up. Title of the article, advertisers plan to boycott Twitter if Elon Musk lets Donald Trump start tweeting again, report says. They're all freaking out. You can see that. They're all freaking out. And Elon Musk is like, yeah, I'm going to clean out 
all of this repression so we can have freedom of information on Twitter. So then the, li the left got so mad that they started, believe it or not, their own platform for some of you who never heard of it. It's called Tribal, T-R-I-B-E-L. If, you, if some of you are mad about Twitter and all these celebrities and people, I ain't going to use Twitter anymore. I just hate Twitter. And they're all going to tribal. You can go over there. Why? Because it's free of hate. Finally, we can get a social media that's free of hate. Yeah, right. Title of the article. And this is from a left-wing source, Daily Beast, okay? The title of their article from a left-wing source. Left's free of hate platform full of bigoted Sexist posts. <laughs> what men learn from history is that men never learn from history. Yeah. Oh, I'll try this alternative platform and no, you're just going to get the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is funny. The White House, they posted a tweet and you know what Musk did? You know what Twitter did? They fact checked it actually. <laughs> Title of the article from CNN Politics. Fact check. White House deletes misleading tweet about social security so they had to retract it so you would think finally you know cleaning house now elon musk you can imagine he's getting a whole bunch of complaints everyone's going to his account and complaining so you know what elon musk did this is so funny he changed uh he changed uh his description one time as elon musk and he changed it to and you can find this on Elon Musk Twitter itself. Complaint hotline operator online. Please mention your complaints below. <laughs> and then his location. When he puts his location in the description, he says in hell. You know, like that. <laughs> so, oh man, the, 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 the charade, the circus goes on. Everyone's mad. So this is my clean house, right? Well, wrong. All right. It sounds ideal. It sounds like a great thing. But then liberals are tasting their own medicine. But without God, no, that's not how it works. Elon Musk did a very dumb thing. He did a thing which you, uh, some of you probably didn't hear, but it's called a blue check. The blue check status in Twitter, what he was trying to do was, so if you have an account, you put a blue check there. Why? To verify that you're the real deal. And then he's charging them uh, $8 a month. Oh, these celebrities got so stinking angry. Because these celebrities, <laughs> this is so hilarious actually, what they were so upset about is, I ain't paying Elon Musk, all right? So they get mad. They have money, you know, you know. And of course they did pay. They're just saying it. But anyway, they get so riled up. I ain't paying that. And they're used to, in their Twitter account, if somebody replies to them, they're used to those people they reply to because they don't read all the, the replies to their tweet, right? God help them. They're not, so it's prioritized by the people that they're usually in contact with or they can tell who's who. However, the blue check, what that does is, so it's supposed to give verification. And if it does give verification, it also gives priority in replies. So <laughs> Alexandria, Alexandria Cortez or AOC, she complained. So with this blue check, anybody could pay $8 but pr pretend to be somebody when they are really not. And then as soon as she posted that tweet, you know who responded to her? Conservatives who were complaining against her. And they said, I know you read this tweet because I got a blue check mark. <laughs> <laughs> it was so stinging hilarious. Well, guess what? Obviously, it did not work because there's a whole bunch of shams out there who pretended to be LeBron's James and those guys, and they were trying to get money. As a matter of fact, there was, I think, a lot of uh, thousands, if not millions of dollars were, uh, had issues in the stock market because of that blue check thing of people faking it. Yeah. So you can check if that's verifiable or not. But the point is, uh, both right and left people, it doesn't matter, everybody, even Musk himself agrees, that was a bad idea. Title of the article from Reuters, Musk halts Twitter's coveted blue check amid proliferation of imposters. Gizmodo's article, Elon Musk delays $8 blue check Twitter verification again. CNBC News, EU's vestiger, Elon Musk blue check is completely flawed and it goes on and on and on and on and on. What a funny charade. 
So Elon Musk, he realized, see, this freedom is not really working. So then he posts on Twitter, new Twitter policy is freedom of speech, but not freedom of reach. Negative hate tweets will be max deboosted and demonetized. So no ads or other revenue to Twitter. You won't find the tweet unless you specifically seek it out, which is no different from rest of internet. So notice right here, it doesn't matter then. It doesn't matter how much you try to control, uh, how much freedom you give, it wrecks it. But notice when he's trying to control the scenario, you're like thinking it could go back to the left wing control again in Twitter. It's just the first step, that's it. So see, it's not fixing anything. This is the article from Fortune. Title of the article, after reinstating Kanye and Trump, Elon Musk keeps Twitter ban for Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. So Alex Jones don't get that freedom on Twitter. See, there's still that, it's not as free as you think. Why? Because in Musk's mind, he sees that as part of the hate speech era. And then people are like, well, that's why we have to side with Alex Jones. He's a good guy. If you won't let him in, then, well, you know what? Alex Jones is not a good guy either. Yeah. For people who don't know all the way back then, all right, uh, if you go all the way back then when he was confronted in court about Sandy Hook, yeah. you know what Alex Jones did? This is from W. SHU public radio station. The title of the article is Alex Jones says he now understands it was irresponsible to deny Sandy Hook shooting. Why? Because he never met these people in person. When he did that, you'll even hear him say it, he's retracting some of the things he said now. As a matter of fact, this is from a conservative source, not left wing, all right? This is a conservative source, The Rap. Title of the article, InfoWars Alex Jones claims he's a fake character on air to win custody of kids. For some of you who didn't know about that Sandy Hook uh, court thing, he was fighting with his wife about custody of kids too. Oh, wow. And then if you, people don't look that up. They just listen to Alex Jones and they say he's a hero, he's fighting for the, uh, for the Christian faith and etc. You don't go back, you don't study. That's why you know who, should, who you should be trusting and studying? The word of God, not the word of a man, no matter how much, oh, he's exposing evil out there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, Trump is happy now that he's back to Twitter, right? Kanye West, too, because of his anti-Semitic remarks. I don't know if you've heard about that, right? So he got kicked out, but now he got reinstated. So Trump should be happy, too, right? Well, title of the article from Reuters is, Trump snubs Twitter after Musk announces reactivation of ex-president's account. Trump don't care. He's going to stick to his own social media platform. But we've yet to see. We'll see what happened. And guess what? That fact check that Elon Musk did, he actually ate his own medicine. Title of the article from Indy 100 is Elon Musk responds uh, after Twitter fact checks the White House, and when you look up his own, uh, when you look up the search word, the articles yourselves about Elon Musk, he gets fact-checked himself in some of his posts. So see, his system is not really working. That's the bottom line. No matter how good the intention might be, and you might think, well, he's siding for us, he's helping us. No, without God, see, without Bible, you can put the best intention you want, it'll still crumble. That's what people don't understand. I want you to turn to Gen uh, Judges 21. Judges 21. Now in Genesis chapter 6, we won't turn there for time's sake, but Genesis chapter 6 says that the, all flesh did what their own way of doing things were. So see that individualism, that freedom. But what did the Bible say? Chaos. Do you see the fruits of Elon Musk's Twitter? It's chaos. Yeah. You thought there would be order. No, that's chaos. It's anarchy over there. Judges 21 also gives that example. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, obviously, except the last, last one. But read that whole chapter in your own time. What happened was this. The children of Israel are trying to do what's spiritually right. 
and Christian or whatever. The tribe of Benjamin, they were sinning against the Lord. So then they uh, defeated them in battle. And then after they defeated them in battle, they didn't want the women to marry with the tribe of Benjamin. Why? Because they're a sinful tribe. But okay, that sounds like a great thing, right? Well, what happened was the trouble is then they're about to lose a tribe. And they're like, look, we can't lose a tribe right here. So what are we going to do with these men? So then they already made an oath that we're not going to give our women to them. So they're in trouble. So what they did was they had a, uh, there was a bunch of women who are dancing and then they allowed those Benjamites to crash that party and steal the women for themselves and catch first dibs. You know what went wrong with all that? They didn't pray to the Lord first. Yeah. That chaos, that anarchy, the Bible says in verse 25, in those days there was no king in Israel. Mm -hmm. Every man did that which was right in what? His own eyes. You can do what's right to you, but it'll be anarchy at the end. There still has to be some sort of order. Yeah. You see that? Order. Oh, and by the way, if you like Elon Musk, title of the article from News 18, and you can look at his profile. I think it's still current. His profile picture shows him wearing a costume, and it's not Iron Man. The title of the article is, Elon Musk turns into a Satanist for Halloween. Twitter is not happy. If you look at that costume that he's wearing, people might first think it's Iron Man, but it's not. It's a different costume. It's a red armor outfit, and then it shows a, uh, that goat of Baphomet, basically. It shows a goat of Baphomet and a satanic symbol. Wow, I thought this guy is our hero. He's a defender of the faith and he's helping the Christians and stuff like that. And you hear these conservative uh, hosts talking about it, raving about him. No, you got to be careful. Got to be careful of that. So this is all chaotic. So let's put order. So... They put order. We have to have more control. But what is this bringing? That's bringing the Antichrist government when all nations combine and put the order together. So it just brings the usher in the Antichrist kingdom. Okay, the big thing is this one, the climate issue. This climate thing is gathering all religions and nations together. It's got the Pope involved, the founders of religions, uh, the, not the founders, but the big leaders of religions involved, the Democrats involved, celebrities. I mean, powerful people, even the powerful globalists involved. So then the title of the article, this is from the U.S. Embassy in Egypt. U.S. government and foundations to announce new public-private effort to unlock finance to accelerate the energy transition. Ooh, so they're building this energy transition mas machine that's intended to accelerate the clean energy transition in developing countries. You know who's the one paving the way for that is that climate guy, John Kerry. But you know who joins him? Rockefeller Foundation and Bezos himself with his Earth Fund. How about that? Globalist, birds of a feather, flock together. Remember what they told you from Forbes and other articles a long time ago? That Bill Gates would block the sun? Title of the article, a Bill Gates venture aims to spray dust into the atmosphere to block the sun. What could go wrong? Title from Forbes magazine. And then what you heard from people was, Oh, no, you know, that's silly. And this was like many months ago. Yeah. But then, guess what? The left-wing source, Daily Beast, now recently came out with their article title, The White House Admits It. We might need to block the sun to stop climate change. <laughs> and it's from their, they even give the link to the official whitehouse.gov website. Title of the article is Request for Input to a Five-Year Plan for Research on Climate Intervention. And they mention about that. Huh. Globalists uniting together. Another one. This is from Cointelegraph. Title of the article, NY Fed launches what? 12-week CBDC 
pilot program with major banks. You know what that is? That's uh, central bank digital currency. Remember this crypto stuff, electronic currency, where I've warned you before where the White House wants to get involved in that one. Federal powers want to get involved in that. And there are people who want to unite it together into a one world currency that will be electronic. And that's why you hear some Christians talking about taking that in. But of course, that's all crazy. No, not till this article came out. Major banks have all gathered together. The banking giants include BNY Mellon, City, U.S. Bank, and Wells Fargo. And they're all getting involved. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York's Innovation Center. Everyone's getting involved in this. Banking giants including BNY Mellon, City, HSBC, MasterCard, PNC Bank, TD Bank, Truist, U.S. Bank, and Wells Fargo, on and on and on. Oh, we're getting closer to electronic form of currency more and more. And this is the article from the Daily Caller. Title of the article, Biden signs declaration to build on the success of passports. We're getting there. We're getting there where the government will control everything from the health to the currency and combining it all into one. So order still does not make sense. It still brings confusion. See, even if you have control, guess what? God will confound it. And I don't mean just man. God will deliberately confound it himself. How dare God would do that when we're trying to bring peace on earth and goodwill to men? And why would God confound that? Simple, because you're going without God. Notice Genesis 11, Genesis 11, verse 6 through 9. Notice mankind tries to bring a one world government where they can have everybody together and they're doing it without God because they want to be God themselves. They want to try to reach up to heaven themselves. But you know what God did? God deliberately confounded and confused them. Genesis chapter 11. Look at verse 4, verse 4. And they say, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name. Isn't that the world today? So what did God say? God said in verse 7, go to, let us go down and there confound their language. Yeah. Notice God deliberately confuses them. Yeah. So even if mankind tries their best to bring control with the best intentions and it sounds nice, God's going to still confound them, confuse them. Well, then, what's the solution? There's, like, no solution to peace then. I mean, you're saying that if we give freedom, there's, God will confound it. If there's uh, control, God will confound it. And then because of people's sin, there's just confusion everywhere. So th there's just no, what's the solution? How can we get peace on earth? Well, that's simple. Go to, go to 1 Corinthians 14. But you won't like the answer. Go to 1 Corinthians 14. Yeah. You won't like the answer. Yeah. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Get to a Bible-believing church. Amen. If you don't have one near you, that's the reason why we go online and we provide you a RBB Connect group. Look at the YouTube description, click on that, and we'll help you find a Bible-believing church. Or we'll give you friends to start something. Or even if you don't have one, we'll be in some way try to give you some kind of church atmosphere, at the very least, or something to help you with. So we believe in helping you to get involved in that. That's why we have a church directory, everything. Notice 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. See, God is not the author of confusion, but God confuses, he confounds. In what context? But of peace as in all churches of the saints. It's within the body of Christ. Amen. So get involved with Bible believers. We're the body of Christ. We should have the peace. When you're interacting with fellow Bible believers, notice that no matter how much God confounds everything, aren't we the only one in peace? Yeah. In order. You. Did you notice that the, in the weekend revival too, tonight, yeah. while the whole world's going conf, uh, confusion and chaos, we're in order. Yeah. 
we're in peace. That's why I get there. The Bible, hear the preaching of the Word of God, the teaching, read it, grow in it. You get peace. There's your answer. And if God won't be your leader, then guess what? You will have a leader, and that will be the Antichrist. The title of the article from Israel today is, Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with Messiah. The Jews are getting ready for their Messiah to come up. And as a matter of fact, they mention, which is so weird in their mystical teachings, he said this, getting the word out now that the Messiah is closer than ever is a matter of life and death. He also mentions, quote, Rabbi Kook, yeah, sounds like a kook, okay, <laughs> responded that when the Messiah arrives, the Sea of Galilee will be full for the first time since Rabbi Kook made this statement. Another righteous rabbi said that according to the current situation in heaven, there will not be Israeli elections. Rather, there will be a war. If the elections do take place, it's pointless since it will end like the other elections. No government will come, uh, will come out of it. They also said this. Rabbi Menachem Schneerson predicted that Benjamin Netanyahu would be the state of Israel's last prime minister prior to the Messianic age. Wow. If not a great many, if not most of the ultra-Orthodox Jews in Israel continue, believe, continue to believe that to be true. Wow. Any moment now, and remember that climate thing that they had for their uh, one world government? That's what the Antichrist can take advantage of. And the proof is, don't forget the Abrahamic Accords. The three big religions, Judaism, Catholicism, and Islam. Some of you never heard of that group, that Abrahamic Accord. When they got together, they were concentrating on climate change. And the title of the article, from Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development, that's part of that uh, Abrahamic Accords group, in Sinai, a prophetic call for climate justice and ceremony of repentance. You wouldn't believe it. What they did was, those three big religions got together to talk about climate change, and they went on Mount Sinai. Why? Because that's where God gave them the Ten Commandments. Wow. So they officially announced an interreligious call to action, which they named the Ten Universal Principles for Climate Justice. So notice that this one world religion already sets up their own Ten Commandments. And why? To repent of, our, to repent of what we did against the environment and etc. It's coming. The Antichrist is coming just any moment now. But why are we going through all this mess? Why is there so much confusion in the sources that you've pointed out in our world? Because God is doing that. I want you to know that. Yeah, exactly. God is sending that. Right. So forget about worldwide revival and you know being amillennial, postmillennial. We're going to bring in the kingdom. No, God is going to keep sending in the confusion yeah. himself. Why? Because of their sin, yeah. bottom line. And they can try their own freedom, but it's still confusion. That's why they need to put control. But you know what? That brings in the Antichrist kingdom, yep. not God's kingdom. That's why if you want order and peace, yeah. no confusion, get into a Bible-believing church. Let's pray. Father, I pray tonight's teachings have been an incredible blessing to the hearers. And let us stand true, faithful, stable, in peace and in order, not following the confusion of the world, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.